two dress backs, I have folded in a doubled uh, seam here to finish the outside edges. And I made sure that it's wide enough that I can sew a couple snaps on the top of it because I don't, you need that little bit of extra fabric for the snaps to be pulled into. I'm getting ready to attach the neckband and I do that while it's straight. On the, this is right side up and I've tied a knot on the right hand side and pulled it up to the fabric. I've cut my neckband longer and wider than it needs to be because I just think it's easier to work with a little bit of extra and I've marked the end points where the uh, where it needs to stop at and then I've also marked the center point so that I can match that up on the dress. I've counted the pleats and I've marked the center two pleats of the gown. I only count between the two front armhole seam allowances because that is sufficient as far as I'm concerned. Then I take the bias band and I only put three pins in here. I put one pin that matches the center front with the center front of the band. I put another pin where the end point is supposed to be. That's your finished uh, seam. And the other pin I place at the other mark where it's supposed to be finished. At this point, I make sure that the gathers are distributed evenly or as evenly as possible between the pin points. I have my sewing machine set up for a basting stitch of about 3.5 and I'm holding on adjust this. I'm holding on to the top two threads. The knot is on the other side of the fabric. So I've got the wrong side with the pleats facing up and I'm going to stitch using the edge of my foot, which is slightly more than a quarter of an inch as a guide. As you can tell, I am making this as a ready to smock. Anybody that knows me knows that I prefer to make almost everything as ready to smock. So I just, and right before I get to that center pin, I take it out because you don't want that giving you some kind of funky looking pleat. Just make sure that you keep the top edge of the gown and the top edge of the bias band even with each other. Okay, take my pins out and I can see from this side, it doesn't look like any of the pleats got uh, funky or twisted. So I'll turn it over and look at it from this side. And you can see that it has shifted ever so slightly from the center point, but it's not enough, in my opinion, to uh, make it a reason to pull it out. But if you are that perfectionist, you can pull out just a couple of stitches on either side and re arrange it. What happens is as it's passing under the foot of the machine, the pressure from the pressure foot tends to push things in this direction, which is why the it's slightly off center that way. But again, for what we're using these gowns for, I think this will be fine. It's not going to make a significant difference. So once you're happy with the stitching, I go ahead and stitch on top of the first row of basting stitches with a regular stitch length of 2.0. Then I go back and I'm going to stitch um, a generous, somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch away from that first stitching line. I think before I do that, I'm going to pull the pleating thread out of the neckband area so they don't get caught. 
So I've stitched my second line and I've tried to keep it very even um, a distance away from the first stitching row to attach the neck band. And now I'm going to trim away the excess fabric right next to that second stitching line to hopefully give a uh, very even bias band width. Once you've trimmed your bias band, you can get a good visual from the shadow through effect to see if you've trimmed it all evenly. And I'm quite happy with the way that this is. So the next thing to do is going to be to trim so that I've only got a quarter of an inch extra on the outside edge of the band. because that will get turned in. And then you're gonna turn the bias band by folding it under and folding it under. But I know that this is too wide because I cut the band wider than it needs to be. It just, it gives you a little extra fudge room if you need it. So now I'm gonna trim just a little bit off the top edge because you wanna be able to stuff this bias band completely so that you don't get ripples goal with the bias band is to be able to tuck in your outside edge, then fold this to your cut edge and fold again, and that should meet right at your stitching line here. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that down all across the bias band. I have my bias band pinned on, and while I could uh, hand whip that down, Right now, I prefer to save that and do that at the end. So the next step then is to fan this out. I am uh, not an advocate of smocking in the straight. I know some people can do that really well, but I've seen way too many turtleneck shaped uh, bishop dresses. And I think that if it's uh, fanned out, you have a, you're more likely to get a nicely shaped bishop dress than if it's not fanned out. I don't need blocking guides or anything else uh, of the kind. All you really need to have if you feel like you need something is a sheet of paper. And you can put your sheet of paper centered in the neckband here. And as long as you've got this angle and all of this lays flat, this is approximately the proper uh, shape for a neckband. So I will tie off my threads on each end and then that portion is finished. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the turtleneck smocking and how to avoid that look because that is not at all attractive. Um, I've got the gown laid out here again on the 90 degree angle like I did when I tied off the threads. And you can see that it's laying perfectly flat. I have not blocked this at all. I don't ever block anything. I am firmly convinced that if you've smocked a bishop properly, uh, it will not need to be blocked. If you need to block your bishop, in order to have it lay flat like this, you are probably smocking too tight and that's something you need to be aware of as you smock. Either that or as you smock, you're smushing your pleats together tightly like this to take your next stitch, in which case you might as well be smocking straight and you are more likely to have that turtleneck effect. So, um, Again, that, that is why I don't advocate smocking straight. And I have seen some ladies that have just done a beautiful job with their straight smocking, but often I see the turtleneck effect and that is not attractive at all. As you can see, when it's laid out, you've got a slight angle just like people do to their shoulders, but you don't want to have this kind of an angle because that's not how anybody is shaped. 
So part of it is how you tie off, in my opinion, and the other part of it is how you are smocking. And of course, you need to smock a bishop design for a bishop dress. Be aware of your tension, be aware of your smocking design, try not to smush those pleats together as you smock and you should be able to come up with a beautifully shaped bishop dress that needs no blocking. Today I wanted to talk about fancy borders for the hemline of your heirloom dress skirts. Um, because I want to work on a small piece, I've got a little week hair down here in a three to four pound size. I think I've shared this picture before on a different video of uh, a little week hair gown that has a decorative hem. And it is so simple to do this, and it really elevates the design element. And you can do this without adding hardly any expense to the cost of your heirloom garment. So I wanted to show you how simple this was. Uh, right here, I have the fancy band hem for that three to four pound garment, and you can see I folded it up so it's wrinkled, but you can see the shape. It's got nice curves. It goes up to a peak in the front, and then you've got your curves. So to create this type of fancy band hem, the first thing you need to do is measure the width of your skirt. And so just for exactly from end to end, and mine is 37 inches. Then I went to the pantry and pulled out the freezer paper. You could also use parchment paper. Uh, you just need a length where you can get a long length of paper that will be the same length as the gown or the skirt. Uh, I think people think this over too much and um, are scared to try something new. So you want the center point of the design element to obviously be in the center front of the skirt. So you can fold your paper in half. Okay, now we've got our center front. And whatever we do on this will be repeated on both sides of the skirt. So you have to kind of think this through. What do you want to do? What do you want it to look like? And um, you can be as meticulous or as freeform as you like with this because it's your skirt it's your dress. So if you fold it again, this would be where approximately the side seam of the, the little wee care gown that I'm working on will be. So do you want it to go up and down, you know, up and down, whatever you choose to do. Um, I like to have a higher peak in the front. So I am going to start and I just start by cutting. You can draw this out if, if that floats your boat, but it's not really necessary. So I'm just going along here. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. So this lower portion would be what your border is on the front of the skirt. And then you can continue that. So if you want the same curved shape to be on the back of the skirt, you would keep that folded together here. Make sure we're even. And I'm just gonna go to the bottom of the dip here because I don't wanna go to a point in the back. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to fold it back onto itself one more time and I'm going to follow this upper curve again. Now this is just a little wee care gown and so 
I like it to look good, but it also doesn't have to be perfect. Now, as I look at this, I like the curve here. I don't like the curve on these two ends. So I'll just fold those back together and just smooth that curve out a little bit. Okay. I don't want to go any deeper, but I do want to just make it a little more attractive. This is like make, cutting out those paper dolls, you know, that we used to have. So this would be a design for a particular hem. And now that I look at it, I decide I, like to, I would like to make this dip go just a little bit lower. So again, you just fold it back together. Not a big deal. So now y'all know how I design. I just kind of freeform it. Okay. Okay, so I like the way that looks. So this is going to be my contrast border on a dress. Now it probably won't be quite this deep because that's, um, well, it's not bad. But I might take about a half inch off the bottom. But you can do that uh, when you get to cutting your fabric and stuff. So that is step one to create our fancy hem for our little gown. For a very simple design, you can fold this in thirds. And obviously if I was doing a, an heirloom Easter type dress, I would be much more meticulous about measuring and making sure everything was exact. But for the little We Care gowns, I find this to be satisfactory and less time consuming to come up with um, a suitable scallop design for the hem. So again, just fold it in thirds, crease it really well. And then you can take anything you've got around the house. I've got a pretty little serving dish here. And if you place that on top of the paper, you can come up with a nice shaped curve. I'm not sure that my scissors will go through all of these layers adequately, but I'll give it a shot here. And another, you don't want to use a half circle shape. So if you've got the entire circle, you don't want to like chop that in half and have that really deep scallop. You want a more smooth and gentle uh, curve than what you're going to get from a half a circle. You end up with such pointy little peaks that I find it to not be terribly attractive. But that's personal choice. So once you cut that out, you can open this up and there you go. You've got a scalloped hem. When you get ready to trace this onto your fabric, you actually can iron the waxy side of the paper on to hold it down and then you don't have to use pins and it won't shift around. So that is the most simple design. Um, some of the other designs that I've come up with